What's up, people? I'm not gonna strip out of the way, but I'm gonna get ready for bed. I just got through the shower. I only got five hours of sleep on Earth left because I did laundry shower. So hopefully that's enough time to be rested. Because my ass is tired. I'm kind of hoping they reschedule this load for much later in the evening or even if they can reschedule it for tomorrow. Uh, not today, which it is now. But like, they ain't going to schedule it for Tuesday, man. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> uh, if they could schedule it for Tuesday morning, I'd be very much in love with them right now. Um, so I'm hoping that's what they do. Uh, we'll see. Right now I need a nap because I'm tired as hell. It's 2.46 a.m. Anyway, I gotta make up my bed. Um, winter is officially here. I got to drive uh, snow showers today coming out of Utah all the way into Wyoming. I knew it was coming because the caps of uh, a lot of the mountains surrounding Utah had snow on them and they weren't like that in the summer months. Um, I'm about to, uh, I gotta get to Lubbock and get all of the clothes and stuff, so I'm gonna order some clothes. I showed you guys the GPS, I'm still gotta play with it. I gotta, I need to get somewhere where I can get the, uh, manual printed out because I wanna, I, I have to, I just read it on the phone, it's not my thing. So, um, I don't know if when I get to Denver, um, I can get to like a Office Max or a Staples or something like that and uh, go ahead and get everything printed. Anyway, I want to put some pictures up of the winter stuff. Um, the load that I went and got today, the one that came after I did my other load, I didn't get out of that other load until... I don't know, it was late in the evening. And I had just about three hours to get to go pick it up. Got to the place to pick it up, and they told me the trailer was at some other facility down the street. Didn't even have an address, just gave me a name and some half ass directions. I found it, and the way it was sitting, I couldn't get under it, so I called the yard dog. That was a lot of drama. I usually have dealt with this customer in other states and cities, and they've always been good. This one, they were kind of rude, um, not very friendly, and maybe it was my ethnicity. Um, because I was not even told in just a minute, I'm doing this, she was not friendly at all, didn't even say hello. Just, I mean, just common courtesy stuff that most, in, in a reefer, most you get. And then even dealing with them on having them come over and uh, pull a trailer out, they just were buttholes. And so I had to become very firm. I wasn't a jerk, but I was like, look, I need your name. This is who I am, this is what I'm with, this is what had transpired. We need to get this rectified if you want to get your load where it's going. And see, that's the thing I like about reefer. You might have some other people who are sticking the muds, but because this is refrigerated, um, you can't dick around. You gotta, you gotta get in there and fix the problem. So um, the problem was resolved, but I wrote my company a long message about what was transpiring. Um, so I was delayed on picking up the load even further, waiting on them, and for my hours to come back from sleeper birth. On top of everything. <sighs> on top of everything as I'm heading this way um, I stop go to the bathroom, get my time estimate how long it's going to take me to get my fuel stop, I'm in uh, Wyoming still and I was like because uh, I came from Idaho early Idaho, all the way I'm, I'm in Rollins I, uh, Rollins Rollins, Wyoming and going down to Denver and so um I'm, I'm uh, four and a half hours out. I estimated about six and a half hours, something like that. Um, I do that because I don't, um, if anything happens, traffic, weather, and right now the weather is very um, inconsistent in Denver. I've heard this very cold from another trucker friend of mine. So um, the weather is kind of odd. I, I slow down. Again, our truckers are just hauling butt. Uh, some truckers, they, as soon as the snow falls, they're off the road. Um, I, I and real quick on winter weather, winter driving. So let's talk about that really, really quick. I slow down. I guess everybody's on the trucker. Feels like, oh, if it ain't a hard freeze, you just go. But this is a guy who he double, double, and triple and chain um, during bad, bad, bad. Most, most, most trucking companies tell you not to chain or. Um, but he was LTL. LTL pays a hundred thousand a year. So if you want to risk chaining for a hundred grand a year, you might want to do that. I don't want to chain. Um, the whole concept of chaining to me is just asinine. Um, 
The reason it's asinine is because you can't go that fast. You're not going to get very far with the chains on. You get out there, you put the chains on, you get soaking freaking wet. You go a few miles, and then you pull over, you take the damn chains off, and then you go some more. It's, it's, it's asinine. Wait for everything to clear. Eventually the storm will pass. Eventually they will get it cleaned up. And then you can slowly go through the area. Um, that to me is the smartest way to do it. So um, I've got to get my AT&T back on because what I do want to do is be able to be in an area where I can call ahead. Um, in like 511, wherever I'm at. Um, also pull data. And this thing, after a while, you don't get any roaming data. It's, it's, it's ghetto. Goes no bum, bum, this. Um, anyway, so at this point, um, the way I do, I drive slower in inclement weather. Rain. I'm not, so the truck is governed at 60 on pedal, 62 on cruise. You don't want to cruise in, 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 uh, in inclement weather, so you're on pedal, okay? So for me, I'm looking at, okay, I'm going to drop the speed by 5 to 10 miles an hour if it's just raining. <clears throat> if we're talking snow, because snow is ice and water, and it could turn into other things, um, when we're talking that, I'll drop it anywhere between... 45 miles an hour up to 55 miles an hour. Um, depending on the heaviness of the snow. If it's real heavy snow, um, what I do from there is I will go ahead and I will uh, go ahead and get off the road because there's a point where the snow is too heavy, um, it's going to turn into slush and then, you know, uh, it's not going to be good. The other thing we do is we have temperature here on our display. I look while I'm driving, especially when it's snowing, for temperature changes. So I will drive anything usually between 34 and higher. Once it starts dropping below 34 degrees, we start getting into freezing. Freezing means black ice. So that's time to get off the damn road. Um, it looks like where they have me mainly driving, they haven't had me do like Texas or any of the uh, southern states which I prefer, um, but where they have me driving is mainly going to be very snowy areas. So, unfortunately, they're going to have a lot of late-ass loads because um, in the evening times when your temperatures really drop, once that temperature hits about 34 degrees, Shannon shuts it down. I, I don't, I'm not going to drive it. Not at night because night is just, that's black ice waiting to happen. Um, the other thing is that your bridges freeze before the actual roads do. So, you're also looking because those bridges are cooling on top and on the bottom so that concrete cement between, it's, it's becoming like ice. So, no, we shut that down. So 34 is usually my limit, and then I'm pulling the truck off the road. We got down to 35 several times while I was driving along. If it would have probably hit 34, then I would have probably gotten off the road somewhere um, and parked. There were truckers that were getting off, but they were staying in the thick of things. Once I got about 100 some miles from my uh, fuel stop, the, it started clearing up. When we had some intermittent sprinkles, it started clearing up. Um, it looks like what I'm seeing is a fog over top. I don't know if that's a fog or if it's a light misting of a... Uh, uh, there's something called ice fog. That's another thing, people. If you see what looks like precipitation but it's a fog, or you see what looks like precipitation, it, it could be uh, ice fog. And I had never heard of it until Bill told me about it. And uh, he saved my butt because I was in Nebraska and I was working for Conway, I think it was. I'm hauling bud, got the music going, and Bill's calling, oh, I'm really talking to him right now, and, I'm, and I ignored him like three times. The fourth time he called, something said pick up. So I picked up, I said, yeah, what's up, man? He said, where are you at? And I told him where I was at. He said, look, he says, do you see any other cars on the road? Nope. You see any other trucks on the road? Nope. You want to know why? Yeah, because you're on ice. Man, I ain't on ice. You're on ice. He said, right now they have ice fall warnings in your area. I'm from Arizona. We don't have no day of ice fog. So I learned about ice fog. So if you, um, you need to really pay attention to the temperature in the areas you're driving because there could be stuff you ain't aware of and ice fog is not your friend. And so it's putting ice crystals on the ground, which is why nobody was on the road. And he showed me, told me to check the rest area. Rest area was full. So he got me to the next exit for a rest stop. God knows the stuff. And I got out there and uh, spent the night there out of the ice fog until everything clears up. My winter weather morning, if you have uh, snow and ice, you had to pull off the road. 
I don't drive until usually after 9 30 10 30 in the morning because by that time the sun has come up it's beat on the ground plus your snow plow snow trucks have already gone out and started cleaning the roadways so you're you're dealing with a uh, lot better conditions put some pictures up here at the end of uh, some of the snow I set my phone so that it would do some uh, random pictures for you so uh, I don't like to play the phone when I'm driving so that's I'll put that on the end of this and I hope you guys are having a blessed day